The new parts have arrived from the factory without issue. They'll be fitted to the car in time for the next session. It's not much of an upgrade, but uh, it's an upgrade nonetheless. So welcome uh, everyone to the Singapore Grand Prix weekend. We've gone from the fastest Grand Prix to the slowest and the longest. Uh, eight practice sessions, as long as there's no rain, there's no rain. That's good. You never want rain at uh, Singapore, because then it just goes on forever. So uh, here's where we stand on the R&D. We're fifth uh, best on the grid now. There's our update. So now it does mean all that's left is ultimate upgrades for this Toro Rosso. We are the best aero car out there ahead of the Williams. So we beat Williams at something. Amazingly. Excuse me. Don't ask me how we're beating Williams, but we are. Look at that. What's that? Ferrari are down the bottom. Incredible. The Ferrari, yeah, they're worst in powertrain as well. And they're worst in, well, the second worst in chassis. So they deserve to be right down the bottom of the field. Might take, uh, have to take another engine for this weekend. Anyway, take a look at the season standings. And we are top of the championship by 108 points over Charles Leclerc. Sergio Perez, Fernando Alonso, Daniel Ricciardo, Lance Stroll, Esteban Ocon, Lewis Hamilton, Sergei Sorokin and Pierre Gasly after his win in Italy. Your top 10. And uh, still to score are Sainz and Grosjean. So we're going to go get uh, practiced, we'll get qualified and we'll see you for the torturous Singapore Grand Prix. As the sun sets over the South China Sea, the sport that never sleeps is alert and raring to go. Welcome, under the bright lights of the Marina Bay circuit, to another Singapore Grand Prix. It's a very long, very physical lap, this one, and really there's not much in the way of margin for error. So we have a bit of an endurance race for you tonight. The Marina Bay street circuit then has 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right, taking us a total of 3.1 miles around the landmarks of downtown Singapore. An average lap speed around here, just 107 miles per hour. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Now, I want to ask you about Kimi Raikkonen. As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed, they'll be starting out of position today due to a power unit component change. So it's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. Everyone has to deal with penalties or reliability issues from time to time throughout their career. You just have to suck up the pain and get on with the job at hand. Today isn't about performing a miracle to put the car back where it should be. It's about effective damage limitation. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Lance Stroll lines up on pole position, and starting alongside is Fernando Alonso. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ocon, Gasly, Charles Leclerc, and Perez, Ricardo, Poole, Van Dorn, and Lewis Hamilton, Bottas, Magnussen, Roman Grosjean, and Verstappen, Sirotkin, Sainz, Marcus Ericsson, and Sebastian Vettel, Holkenberg, and Kimi Raikkonen rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Whoops. P8. To be honest, I actually thought the lap was a lot better than it was because we absolutely went for it, and uh, it just didn't turn out uh, didn't turn out that way, unfortunately. Um, it seems to be the same problem with Singapore. We just have the best setup, but the AI are so OP around here, it's unbelievable. Anyway, it's a one-stop um, hypersoft to ultrasofts. It might be hypersoft to soft because I just could not get the ultrasofts working through practice. Um, so we'll see how we'll see how that goes uh, for this long race. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get out there. We'll try the best we can from P8, and uh, hopefully. We can bring home a good finish for the Toro Rosso team. Let's uh, let's see what happens then. Oh well, here goes torture, folks. Five red lights for the Singapore Grand Prix at the Marina Bay Street Circuit. Lights are out, and off we go. 
And it's a pretty decent start, actually, from everyone involved. It's, well, look at that. Williams uh, flying through the middle. I don't know who that... Um, oh, it's okay. So, Rockin, sorry, because Lance Stroll's on pole. Whoa! Free wide... Oh! Oh! Oh, is that... Oh, the car's out! Oh! That is big for championship implications at the Marina Bay Street Circuit. Charles Leclerc out of this race. I think he was just wiped out by one of the Mercedes. Might have been Valtteri Bottas. I'm not uh, entirely sure. But we're up in a P4, believe it or not. We've made one of our lightning starts yet again. All that's in front of us is Stroll, Alonso and, o and uh, Ocon. So there's a uh, previous there. Between myself okay, and the French and support in the But... Uh, Thankfully, uh, all is uh, going well as we go to Valtteri Bottas here in the Mercedes. Oh, and now he's out. Oh, I think he had, it must have been Bottas because he hit the wall there massive. He hit the wall big time. And yeah, he is, he's out of this race. That is, well, that's just, what do you say to that? Because that's just nuts, quite frankly. I mean, phew. What a start to the Singapore Grand Prix already. We've lost Leclerc, we've lost Bottas. Wow. And Leclerc is our championship rival. How did that happen? We were free wide with Gasly and Leclerc. And I think he just ran out of room and then here comes Bottas. Bang! Dear me, so out of turn 23, Lance Stroll still leading the way we're from Fernando Alonso. Esteban Ocon, we're still P4 with Sergio Perez right on our tail as we go to Pierre Gasly, who must be carrying some sort of issue now, thanks to what happened in the first corner on the last lap. Around the outside goes Stoffel Van Dorn, and that's going to be for P7. So Van Dorn having a great look at the debris on the outside of turn 3. That is incredible to think that there's that kind of debris there. Oh, as we go to the other end of Ravels Boulevard, it looks like Pierre Gasly is just going backwards because here comes uh, Lewis Hamilton now. This is for P8 around the outside of Hamilton. He's just letting them have the outside and he's letting them have the positions. So from the thrills of victory in Italy, it's now the despair in Singapore. Once again, Singapore has bit and bit hard on... Uh, a lot of these uh, drivers already and the field actually if you look at it, the field on the mini map is very much spread out which uh, is not uh, like Singapore so we just need to get our head down and try and oh as we hit the wall did we suffer some damage there in that uh, contact I hope we didn't oh and we hit the wall again what the hell this Singapore Grand Prix is Picking up where the Italian Grand Prix left off is absolutely mental. As we come out of turn 22 to towards well, turn 23. Well, I say 23A, 23B. So there we go. Fernando Alonso now okay. sets the fastest lap of the race. DRS gets has been enabled. On lap number three into turn one as we go back to Pierre Gasly. He's got Kevin Magnussen right behind him. Like Magnussen's he's gone to the inside. He, he just, he's just giving them the corners. Round the outside goes Magnussen. And that's P9 for Kevin Magnussen. Nice, uh, nice view from the back of the uh, rear wing there on Gasly's car. As we head down Raffles Boulevard into turn number seven. Yeah, that's right, turn seven. And now go back to the top of Raffles Boulevard. Here comes uh, Magnussen. There's Gasly. He's got uh, Max Verstappen. Right on his tail, and that's going to put uh, Gasly out the points, unfortunately. Ooh, bit of a lock-up from Verstappen. He nearly didn't get the job done then. So move Verstappen to P10 as we come through turn 11, through turn 12, over the Anderson Bridge, into the Anderson Hairpin, turn 14. And look at that view. That is Perez right on our rear wing. Down to turn 15. We're going to take the inside line. If Perez wants it, he has to go around the outside. He's thinking about going around the outside. P4 locks up big time. And now he's hit the wall on the outside of turn 15. Look at Ricardo. He's going to take advantage, I think. Lovely view from the curb there of uh, turn 16. Yeah, turn 16. No. That's turn... Oh, I've lost count. Which... No, that's turn 17. Yeah, that's right. Turn 17. I'll get the corner. There's so many corners around this horrible street circuit that you don't know. Well, don't be wrong, it's not horrible in 
the night nostalgia. It's just horrible in the light. We want to pit this something. lab, so push now. That's We're leading story. our teammate by 12.8 seconds. As we uh, head into turn number three, here comes uh, Gasly again to start lap number four, and he's got Roman Grosjean on his uh, rear wing. That's going to be for P11, and that's going to be a job done. And uh, if Sorokin's next, that's going to be the easiest pass of Sorokin's life. He should get that done way before turn seven. Uh, as we go back to myself and Sergio Perez. Perez has got DRS. He's really using the power in that Mercedes engine side by side into turn seven. But we're going to... Oh, we've run a little wide as well. And we uh, nearly put uh, him into Daniel Ricciardo. As we go back, look at that. That move's done before even the kink in Raffles Boulevard. That power in that Mercedes engine and Gasly's got no choice but to surrender to Sorokin. We pretty and, much uh, burned Sorokin off our excess P12. fuel. We'll be back on target soon. Don't wait too long to turn the engine down. As we come over the Anderson Bridge into the Anderson Hep in turn 14, now turn 15, down uh, to we go. You can see that uh, Perez is going to have another go down the outside of turn 15. We'll just, uh, oh, he's almost hit the wall again. We've got a train now behind us because we've got Perez, we've got Ricardo, we've got Van Dorn, Hamilton. It's, uh, look, at you can see the three in the lead, Ocon, Alonso and uh, Strolls. We nearly bid it in turn eight, turn 19. They've just gone. We, we are sort of the neck in the bottle, in the cork in the bottle. As, uh, what are we going to do here? Uh, this is going to be a pit stop, so we're coming in. So we're looking to get a massive, massive undercut here on uh, the four behind us to try and just do something hopefully this pit stop goes better than it did last weekend because if it didn't doesn't go better than it did last weekend then we're in trouble so here we go ultra soft's on i'm not uh, entirely happy about the ultras going on but we've got no choice they're the, they're the fastest tire now the ultra soft as we head down and to this absolutely stupid pit lane as well I mean, look at that. It's so tight. You almost hit... Oh, he almost did hit the wall. Didn't get a penalty for crossing the white line there. Now, this happened while we were in the uh, stops here. This is going to be uh, Gasly being passed by... Uh, who's this? Uh, Carlos Sainz. That's going to be now for P12. And uh, move uh, Sainz up into P12. You'd imagine the next clip we see of that is going to be Grosjean coming past uh, Gasly. There, as we see uh, Stoffel van Dorn. Have a think about a move on Ricardo, but it looks like Hamilton's going to get Rick Van Dorn instead. Go get you some. That is side by side still. Oh, they're going to be fighting down to turn four. And, sorry, turn five onto Raffles Bull. No, that's turn six, sorry, onto Raffles Boulevard. No, that is turn five onto Raffles Boulevard. The kink is turn six. And uh, Hamilton's going to get that move done. Will uh, Van Dorn try and stick it around the outside? No, he can't. And Hamilton will move up into P7. Sorry, P6. Uh, as we go to Roman Grosjean with Sergei Sorokin. And uh, this is going to be for P10. And uh, that Haas has got no... Nothing for the uh, powerful Mercedes engine. But he's still hanging it out there. Fair play to Grosjean, but Sorokin's coming back. Sorokin's going to want to look uh, for some advantage in his home uh, Grand Prix next weekend. The Russian Grand Prix and uh, Grosjean will keep P10. As we go back to R Pierre Gasly, it's actually Marcus Ericsson that's going to come past him. Oh, this is, going to be, this, is, this is really painful for me to watch as we see uh, Gasly come through. Um, I feel so sorry for him. That's uh, P16. Meanwhile, out in front, it's still these three. Uh tryhards and uh, strolls coming in alonso's coming in will uh, ocon join that yes he will it looks like ocon's lost a little bit of ground there to uh alonso and stroll the them these three right now are the proper class of the field there's no other way of saying it look at that that is efficiency for uh, stroll he's out alonso's gonna be right behind him i assume but uh it's gonna be a case of will alonso finally get his man on these ultra softs. In fact, he's lost a lot of ground to uh, Stroll. He's going to be more closer to Gasly as Sorokin goes past. Uh, so he's behind his teammate, is Lance Stroll. Excuse me one second. Pierre is in the pits. There we go. So we're coming across start lap six. Do we get an undercut on... Well, we got a massive undercut on Hamilton. 
going that extra lap has really put the cat amongst the pigeons and we got miles ahead of Hamilton. So you'd imagine we're going to be miles ahead of Perez when uh, the time comes we go through turn five on the Raffles Boulevard for the sixth time. This is where the DRS is, there's the king come to the hotel. Now into turn seven. Turn seven you can take faster than it looks. The battery is low on energy, reduce ERS deployment. Well, I will sort the battery out in a second, but we're uh, we're actually trying to battle the overcut, undercut, sorry, uh, Sergio Perez in Force India. In fact, he's the only car that's uh, not stopped that's starting on the Hypertoss uh, yet as uh, Perez. As we come up to the back of Sebastian Vettel, he's fighting with, I can't quite see who that is in P10. Got to get my eyes tested, I think, for that one. It looks like a Renault, so it's Nico Hulkenberg. into turn 15 and here comes Perez I imagine this is his stop now yes so do not be surprised if Perez comes out way behind uh, ourselves as he wow he really attacked that line uh, oh no there's a uh, Van Dorn Van Dorn hadn't come in yet you would have thought though with the gap between Alonso and Van Dorn that uh, he could have uh... oh is it... yeah, and that's just gonna hurt him even more so You'd expect us to get past, but I'd keep an eye on uh, Hamilton and company trying to get past uh, Ser Sergio here. Let's see where we are compared to Sergio. I can't see us, so if we come out miles ahead, I think we have. We're not even in the shot. There's Hamilton. So, he, yeah, we came out miles ahead of Sergio Perez, the undercut. Absolutely powerful on the streets of Singapore around Marina Bay. And uh, so it should be the status quo as we set the fastest first sector of the race. It should be status quo now. Back uh, back to the positions, but uh, we're going to have uh, Perez all over our rear end. So we're just going to get out of hot lap mode now and uh, charge this battery up some more as we go to that looks like Sebastian Vettel and no, it's Kimi Raikkonen and Nico Holgerberg, sorry. This is for P15. Is that Ferrari going to get past that Renault, even though the Ferrari is the worst on the powertrain? I don't think... Oh, I don't know. He's hanging it around the outside, is uh, uh, Nico Hulkenberg. Still side by side into turn nine. Will they be side by side down to the Singapore Sling? The old... Well, I should say the old Singapore Sling, turn ten. He's, they're still side by side. Come on. This, this is fantastic racing. We're looking at... Oh, there was a bit of contact there. It's all sparks flying. And uh, yes, that's uh, going to be Kimi Raikkonen into P15 through the Anderson hairpin. As we go back to ourselves, going through turns 21 and 22. Now down to turn 23 to start lap number eight. Thank the Lord, we're halfway through the race already. Good Our gap Lord. to first place is 10.9 It's a utterly seconds. long Grand Prix, this. Just because it's so slow. They've really got... I don't mind the Singapore Grand Prix. But they've got to sort the lap out, make it quicker. Because you can't be taking a circuit this slow and going that long lap-wise. Although, in saying that, look at the Hungara ring. Uh, yep, that's right, I said it's a bit hungry. Deal with it. So, uh, into turn seven we go. And you can see now we're in uh, high battery mode, not a uh, hot lap. But uh, there's no chance of catching unless one of the top three have a problem. There's no chance of uh, catching them. So you go to Marcus Ericsson and Carlos Sainz. This is a P13. And it looks like uh, this should be a no contest because that Alfa Romeo Sauber is so much more better than the Renault this season. They've come on leaps and bounds and he's not quite got the job done as uh, Ericsson. And he still hasn't got the job done. Down to turn 10, the Singapore Sling. We might, uh, he might have uh, something now. Uh, that noise you probably heard was me getting a party invitation. Uh, I'm not uh, particularly interested in that. Oh, into the wall on the outside of turn 18. Oh, that, that might damage the front wing. Doesn't look like it. Into turn 22. Well, yeah, yeah, I lost mine there. 21 and 22. Now down to turn 23. So brilliant if you hit that first apex perfect you are off and you are on battery the charge is low if we turn we, down uh, the ers deployment we can harvest more energy turn one 
turn two is nothing because we get a warning for exceeding the track limits. That's uh, bogus. Dropping a second lap to the car behind. One second. Looking for more punishment after what happened with uh, Ocon last week into turn five down Raffles Boulevard and under the hotel turn six. So much more faster than the, it looks into turn seven over the curves on the inside and the outside turn eight. Try not to hit that wall on the outside. Oh, oh, look how close we got there into turn nine. Just let the car flow through. Try not to hit the wall on the outside again. And now down to what was the old Singapore sling. If you've never seen the Singapore sling chicane, go look it up because it was an absolute nightmare of a chicane, but so much fun at the same time. We go to Nico Hulkenberg and Kimi Raikkonen for P16. In fact, no, it's Gasly going to have a look at Hulkenberg. Sorry, he was nowhere near with a... Uh, Nico Hulkenberg to Kimi Raikkonen. So, and now we've got a problem as well because Perez has closed this gap up mightily. So we could have a big, massive problem going out of turn five down the Raffles Boulevard with Sergio Perez trying to overtake us as we come under the stadium grandstands into turn 20 over the curb. That was a bit uh, rough over the curb. Now through 21, 22, just let the car flow right to the outside of the track now into turn 23 and bang on the apex yeah that's how you take that corner just ease off and then bang through the court apex turn 10 we've got six laps to go as we run a little wide through turn one honestly this Toro Rosso is not suited for this Singapore track at all I, I would guarantee if we get all the ultimate upgrades we still not be uh, suitable for this track as we get uh, now what? Here comes Sergio Perez. He's going to the inside. He'll have the outside for turn. He almost pushed us wide there through turn six, but we'll come right back. Thank you very much. You're going to overtake someone, at least learn to overtake someone properly, Sergio, like your teammate should do. Who's that there? That is Roman Grosjean with uh, Sergei Sorokin, or is that Mark? Yeah, Sergei Sorokin. That's P11 on the track, and Sorokin's going to get past Grosjean here. Was there a bit of blue light under uh, Sorokin's car there going uh, through turn seven that was a uh, maze if it was now back to uh, myself and Sergio Perez for P4 on the track he's got to run it he'll be shown the outsides of the corner here I always go for the outsides of the corner on so Sergio's going wrong go oh, Sergio Perez is out of the race what on earth happened you idiot and we get a warning and now the virtual safety car has come out. Caution. Oh, caution. Dear. The virtual safety car is out. Two weekends in a row problems a with a Force India. <laughs> oh, let's have a look at that from uh, Perez's on board. I think he just got it completely wrong going into turn 15. Oh, he's, yeah, he's carrying way too much speed. And it, we, we were taking the perfect Virtual racing line and ending. he just Maintain absolutely the green flag. So we joined it on lap 11 now as the virtual safety car comes to an end, coming out of turn 5. And uh, now we haven't got to worry about Sergio Perez, now we've got to worry about another Mercedes, the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. The gap to the car ahead is 15.0 seconds. That is going to be a chore and a half because that, mind you, that Mercedes is not as good as it was at the start of this career. That Mercedes is a utter, utter, well, let's know of better words, it's a heap. Let's just call it like it is. Dear me. Sergio Perez. Last week it was Esteban Ocon, this week Sergio Perez. What on earth. I, I would love to get into the mind of these Force Indians and just find out what the frick is going on. Because sometimes I actually wonder. Battery charge they, is uh, high. Let's increase the ERS deployment to up the pace. They, uh, attempt passing moves. And we come into uh, their version of the, the swimming pool. Do you know what I personally like to say? I'd like to see that this first part of the swimming pool be faster. You know, like Monaco. I think that would be uh, that would be perfect there. But then uh, you got to remember who designed uh, this circuit. I think it was uh, Hernan Tilke. What a genius he is at making circuits. And that's no... Because uh, some of the circuits he's done has uh, been alright. I'll name uh, Kuala Lumpur and Shanghai in there. And then other circuits. 
Oh, we'll say Sochi. <laughs> That's all we need to say is Sochi. And uh, also Abu Dhabi as well. So on lap 12 now. Coming down to turn Our number gap to 7. The car in front is 14.9 seconds. seconds. Arc on. That is how much that lead trio is on it today. There is no answer to the lead trio. Uh, I tell you what, I tell you who did lose out badly in the pit stops. It looks like Stoffel lost out in big time because he's actually now behind the Ricardo. Here as we come into the Anderson hairpin. Oh, a little wide through the Anderson hairpin. That's going to put Hamilton on our tail for turn 15. Let's see if Lewis Hamilton will uh, go for the big boy move around the outside. We're going to give him plenty of room. And he, oh, he nowhere near, so he's all right there. So we'll stay P4 ahead of Lewis Hamilton. But uh, I guarantee if Hamilton gets past, we are nowhere. Because then we'll be going down faster than, uh, we'll be going down faster than the porn star on a period. That was a controversial one right there. So over the curves, turn 21, 22, now into turn 23 to start lap number 13 of the Singapore Grand Prix. It re it's not a sprint, this one. It's a marathon under the uh, bypass into turn one. Now into turn three. The back end tried to kick out through turn two. And we almost run over the debris still left by uh, Charles Leclerc. It's got a big time championship implications this weekend because Perez and Leclerc were the main two challengers. Big, big time implications. It might mean if results go away, we could win the championship at the Russian Grand Prix. Which will be our third different uh, venue to win the championship. We won it in, uh, I believe it was Mexico, the first one. And we won the last year's championship in that dominant Williams in like, Monza. And then we'll win in a not-so-dominant Toro Rosso in Russia. Incredible. It might not be Russia, actually. It might be uh, Japan. But it'll certainly be... Uh, in fact, yes, it's going to be... Uh, no, it would be... Uh, OK, Russia. gap ahead is 17.5 seconds. Had to, uh, had to do a lot of thinking then. Do the cal calculations in my head. I think if I'm right, we should have a 120-point lead over uh, one of the two, I think, uh, Leclerc. But, uh, we shall see. The Russian Grand Prix is not, uh, even though uh, the setup that we've got was perfect for the Williams, it may not be so perfect for this Toro Rosso. Okay, so, uh, to leader, lap 22.0 seconds. Oh, this is... Uh, this has been a long, long race, folks, and I'll be glad to get to the end of it. So out of turn three, down to, through turn four, that's just a nothing corner. Turn five, the turn onto Raffles Boulevard, and here comes Lewis Hamilton. He's right on our tail lock. He's going to have a go with the DRS. Mercedes against Honda, that's going to be a no contest. He d gave us much more room than Perez dared to give us. We go down the inside, we'll keep peace set for and almost... Uh, cause a mischief to Lewis Hamilton he was uh, almost right into the back of uh, well right into the front sorry of uh, Daniel Ricciardo as we go to Grosjean with Ericsson this is a P11 and uh, that's two Ferrari powered cars and, well that's a move down the inside that, hard, never seen one all day down the inside there but uh, fair play to the uh, Swede for that move as we go back to that, is that Raikkonen, Hulkenberg, Gasly Vettel's coming as well, will Gasly go, go for the move to the outside? No, Hulkenberg locks it up and that'll be through goes uh, Pierre Gasly to P15. Hulkenberg now fighting with Vettel for P16. And uh, shift Gasly up in position as we go into turn Let's 19. use some of this energy. Increase the now ERS deployment. 20. And turn 21, oh, a little wide through 21. Now, coming to turn 23, Lewis Hamilton right in our back bumper as we start the final lap of the race. This is your final lap. They're so final far lap ahead, of the race. Ocon, Alonso and, and Stroll, that they're in Raffles Boulevard now. We're only just coming to start the first, last lap. That is how dominant that Williams and that McLaren and that uh, 
Force India have been as we turn on to Raffles Boulevard. Whereabouts is Lewis Hamilton? He's close, but he's not close enough, I think. I think we're going to hold him off into turn seven. So we got a lovely run out of turn five, which will uh, help us a lot as we go into turn eight. And he's now right on our rear end. See if he uh, has a go at a move down into the Singapore sling. Turn 10. I don't think he's quite close enough. No, he's not. So uh, his last chance is going to be turn 15. Let's see if uh, he has a go turn 15 as we come over the Anderson Bridge into the Anderson Hairpin. Oh, around the Anderson Hairpin. Let's see if uh, he has a go. Now he's nowhere. He's not even close here. Not even close. But uh, it's GG to Lance Stroll. Williams will win the Singapore Grand Prix. Lance Stroll from Fernando Alonso. Fernando kept him honest there. Ocon will finish a distant third. What a fit race for those three. They were in a different class. Speaking of a different class, Hamilton's going to have a go down to turn 17. He's an absolute nut into turn 17. He gets loose over the kerb. Oh, we're still side by side. He's not done yet. The fireworks are going off, but the fireworks are just finishing for the end of this race. If we come out of turn 20, he's right on our rear tail. But luckily, we're going to come out of turn 22. And you know what? Even though this car's been an absolute hunk of turd, we'll take P4 because that's a decent result. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. And now I'm out of breath. And now it's time to wind down and celebrate after that fantastic Grand Prix. Here they come, your top three, out onto the podium. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Paul increases their championship lead. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? I'm going to go for Marcus Ericsson. He's clearly got a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, and he's matured a lot over the past few seasons, which served him well today. And here's how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. It was also a strong Grand Prix from Haas F1 this weekend. Fantastic work from the American team to move themselves further up the table. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next time, though, goodbye. Well, that was nuts. What a crazy Singapore Grand Prix. Uh, your winner, Lance Stroll from Fernando Alonso. Uh, Esteban Ocon, we self in fourth. We were 20-odd seconds behind. Lewis Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo, Stoffel van Dorn, Kevin Magnussen with some more points for Haas. Max Verstappen and Sergei Sorokin, your points scorers. Whew. Pierre Gasly finished P14. We didn't see the move he uh, did on Kimi Raikkonen, uh, unfortunately. And Charles Leclerc, Bottas and Perez out of this race. Big time championship implications there. Just from those Perez and Leclerc alone. Unbelievable. What a Singapore Grand Prix. And um, about what last two races. So you can imagine Russia might be just as bad. Oh well. Let's, uh, let's go and see Claire. Because no doubt she's got something that she wants to say. Oh here we go. Good day today. Tell us about Good it day from today. your perspective. It wasn't the cleanest race today was uh, it? No I was an idiot magnet today. Simple as. Ooh they must have been about what. Hey. had a bit of contact today. Who was at fault there? I didn't think I hit Gasly at all. But uh, if I did, he needs to get out of my way. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your time. I honestly didn't think I hit Gasly. I do think that that means now, well, I've got to wait till Russia to beat all these j -brones. But we're going to beat Lance Stroll again. Which is, uh, which is a good thing. Now, Toro Rosso has served me well here, so I think what I want to do 
is I want to make sure that we uh, we give them back all Excellent the respect that they today. gave me for allowing me to do like this seat uh, for, for this year. On to the next one. So, what's Pierre? What's Pierre looking We've at? He's looking at something. Uh, some about we'll invitational events. Not interested. The end of this uh, qualifying didn't meet expectations. No, I didn't look comfortable. Well, I thought I was actually. Uh, the race went well. So, all good. Right then. So, we've got 3,386 points to play with. We know we're not going to get anything for this re the next race, the Russian Grand Prix, or the Japanese Grand Prix. So, let's go and set up for America, Mexico, and certainly Brazil. So, I would say... Let's go and get those top two power upgrades. That will give us an equal setting with Williams. And that is what we want. So, yes please on that one. We'll have enough points. Yes, I will. Should these are about 84. Yep, 84 points. So we got two mega power upgrades coming for the Russian... Sorry, the American Grand Prix. We'll have the championship won by then as well. So that is going to be amazing. It will put us as, uh, ooh, just looking at the line, second best team behind the Williams Racing Martini team. Just me. I wonder if um, Christian Horner will call me up to the main team this next season, though. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Me and that, uh, me and that Red Bull try to upgrade the uh, thing. So what we're going to do with the um, Russian Grand Prix, we did switch over the engine, get the fresh engine for Singapore. We're going to switch back to the old engine for the Russian Grand Prix so it makes sure it does its seven uh, race cycle. Uh, 120 points. I was right there over Leclerc and Perez. So yeah, I would say with... So I would say we could win if we finish five points better than Leclerc and six points better than Perez. We can win it at the Russian Grand Prix. That would be mega. If we could do that. But I have I have a feeling that the Russian Grand Prix, the Williams are going to come on fire. Because it's Sergei Sorokin's home race. And they've just got the absolute monster engine for the front straight and the back straight. So that'll do it. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you watched this, enjoyed this video. It does help me out. And we'll see you all at the Russian Grand Prix.